CO2Web, one word, dot info. Okay, the next speaker up will be the distinguished uh, Professor Shinuichi Akasofu from Alaska. He's a professor of physics emeritus at the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. He has done so many things that I guess it's really an honor to be able to even stand here with him. He has published close to 550 journal articles and authored 10 books. And uh, among many of the distinguished honor, he was given some of this uh, award from the Emperor of Japan in 2003s and many years, on including the gold and silver stars. And of course, one of the uh, key work, a uh, key achievement that he has done is basically is to found the International Arctic Research Center, which is, I think, according to my information, is that together with the International <coughs> Pacific Research Center was one of the deal that uh, Al Gore broke with, uh, made with the <coughs> Japanese government to sort of co-fund this uh, two distinguished center, which both are really, really excellent in, in their own uh, areas of expertise. So this shows that uh, Professor Akasofu has no sort of a biased viewpoint on this CO2 issue or El Gore for sure. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk about a uh, little ice age and uh, also uh, multi-decadal oscillation. Basic data: the temperature and the CO2. Uh, CO2 starts to increase over uh, this uh, is this around 1946. That is the uh, just after the war. And uh, <coughs> what I'm going to show you is that uh, taking this temperature curve. I thought that I should draw a straight line. And uh, so uh, what what's happening here is that uh, this is almost my family figure. This is the same as previous one. This is what everybody uses in terms of temperature changes. Uh, I say there's a straight line, uh, the increase. And then what I'm going to show you is that I can extend this to uh, about 1800 almost linearly, and the CO2 starts to increase from here. And uh, IPCC is specifically talking about this portion and uh, <coughs> say that this is mostly uh, man-made as a uh, change. Uh, then they extend by using a supercomputer to uh, this time itself. I did by handwriting in 10 seconds, it took 10 <coughs> seconds. But I propose that this, if you draw a lin the uh, straight linear line, you can see the <coughs> multi-decadal oscillation. And uh, so I simply continue that, and uh, we are now here. Uh, I'm an uh, Arctic scientist, so I would like to uh, the discuss the global warming issue uh, from the Arctic point of view. Of course, we have a glacier, and uh, uh, this is nothing to do with global warming. As you know, the glacier is a river of ice. Has ice has to move. Uh, when you look at the glaciers uh, all over the world that has a good record of uh, the Permian position, this is the famous Alaskan glacier. It began, uh, it was uh, here 1794, and uh, you can see it continuously receding. So uh, receding started long, long time ago, uh, the well before the uh, carbon dioxide became issue. Uh, this is uh, from Himalaya. Again, you can see that Himalayan glacial receding uh, from about 1800, so a long time before the uh, 
Europa von der Altseite begehen nicht. Das ist die famous uh, New Zealand Glacier 1865. It, it's filled with varies, but uh, it this is the uh, Greenland Glacier, famous uh, Jacobson Glacier, 1860s. It continuously receding. Uh, this is uh, the European Alps Glacier. Again, you can see 1640. It's continuously receding and dis disappear every year. Uh, they have, uh, because Europe, they have a good record. Of, they kept a good record of uh, glaciers. And uh, you can see that uh, it <coughs> began to recede around the 1860s continuously. But it, it began to build up during this period. And this is what we call Little Ice Age. And you see this kind of picture all the time. Uh, so what I'm going to say is that it's true that a glacier receded from 41 to 04. However, this is a partial story. This glacier re began to recede long before this happened. So uh, this is only a very partial story. It's not really right. Uh, then some people say that, oh, uh, <coughs> the receding, the accelerating. On the other hand, uh, you don't see the news like advancing very rapidly too. So all the glaciers are doing this. And uh, if you look at 200 years of a time scale, it has been receding. Uh, there are many other data, uh, lake uh, freezing, river freezing rate is getting uh, later. Uh, almost linearly, and also melting rate is getting <coughs> earlier too. So uh, this is a another record that shows that the, there was a cold period and then uh <coughs> the continuously warming. Because you know the stories and river Thames were frozen quite often 16, 1700s. And so you know that. And then Last year, they wanted to uh, do something, but I couldn't see ice. So. Uh, sea ice, uh, quite a bit of story. And uh, you definitely see ice has been receding. And uh, particularly 07, uh, it be became much less. And uh, people worrying about that the sea ice Arctic Ocean sea ice may disappear in about 10 years in the summertime. But um, again, if you look at uh, all the records, this is Norwegian fisherman's records. This is the uh, southern edge of uh, Arctic sea ice has been receding. This is the way moving northward. It started around 1800 and continuously receding and uh, we are just talking about this point. And uh, I tried to find good data for this period, and I found one. Actually, as you can see, it began to build up, and then around 1800 down on, it started to recede. So uh, th there was a definitely a fairly cold this period from 16 to about 1800. Uh, just to let you know that uh, the ice is now coming back. 08 is about 7% greater than 07. And furthermore, this year, we do an uh, ice break operation every year. And the ice is uh, much thicker this year. And uh, <coughs> furthermore, the uh, whole Arctic Ocean temperature is decreasing. Uh, of course, this is a famous uh, freezing study, there was a warm period here, and then fairly uh, relatively cool period, which we call Little Ice Age, and then 
the temperature starts to recover there from about 1800. Uh, this is a National Academy study. They combine all kinds of records, and you can see again it starts to recover. Uh, th you can draw the straight line, which is the sad, almost the same uh, slope as what I showed you at the beginning. We have many other ice records to show that. Uh, the this one in the Arctic, the the uh, core ice core record from uh, Little Island in the Arctic Ocean, the temperature has been linearly increasing. Uh, perhaps the best uh, data, uh, the linear increase of is the uh, sea level increase start around 1850s. It's continuous, almost linear, all the way to the present. So uh, there's no question that there was a, what we call little ice age, and this is the famous uh, uh, Hokkaido Creek again. And so we know that the existence of a little ice age. So coming back to the earlier figure, what I showed you was that uh, if I have time, I have a lot of more data, but uh, I could draw this line, and then I actually there are studies that uh, this 95%, the, con the confidence that you can draw this straight line like this is about 0.5 centigrade per 100 years. So there is a study, not mine, but uh, this is a possibility. Uh, and it's the only difference so, uh, uh, between me and the IPCC would be that how to interpret this portion. And the IPCC said that uh, this uh, definitely due to, mostly due to CO2, but I would say uh, during this period there was an linear increase from little ice age up to here, and <coughs> uh, plus this multi decadal oscillations. So it, uh, although we are O8, there is a considerable difference between their prediction and what's happening here. Uh, of course, uh <coughs> the next question is, uh, multi-decadal oscillation, uh, what I would like to call, and uh, uh, most people draw a sort of a average or some kind of baseline, and then below or above, uh, they would indicate uh, this is lower. But one point I want to ask you pay attention is that it's kind of labeled here, and this is also this is Japanese one, also start level. Uh, this is the famous uh, Dr. Spencer figure. So uh, what I'm going to emphasize is that uh, I can explain why we are here by simply assuming that all the changes, the uh, global warming partly due to a uh, recovery from the little ice age and plus this multi-decadal oscillation. Uh, another thing that uh, the why I say there was a multi-decadal oscillation, this is a famous uh, Hansen's figure. Uh, this is the last half of uh, last century. The temperature this the change you can see that Alaska, Canada, Siberia, that is to say in continental Arctic, are uh, substantially <coughs> greater temperature change than other places. And also Greenland was actually cooling during, during this period. So uh, we asked uh, Tim Hansen to give us a recent one uh, from uh, 86 to 05, and uh, we're expecting that this will grow bigger if this is due to uh, uh, 
of the carbon dioxide. And what happened is that it's gone, disappeared. And we still, we don't see this even today. So uh, this means that this come and go all the time, you know, it's multi-decade of it. So uh, uh, we can ask IPCC to do some calculation. This is similar to uh, the previous conference figure. Uh, this is uh, from uh, the, late, uh, the newer study show the temperature, the geographic distribution of the temperature changes during this period. And uh, again, we can see Alaska, Canada, Siberia was substantially warm, and uh, Greenland was cooling. So uh, because IPCC says that they can explain the uh, uh, temperature change from uh, 1950 to uh, 2000, so we asked them, uh, please reproduce this uh, for us. Uh, this is what happened. An answer. So uh, my first response to that was, uh, what are the IPCC doing? Spend lots of money in the computer calculation. I cannot even most prominent warming. And it took about one month to come to a conclusion. Uh, much easier to interpret this is not due to CO2 because they put the CO2 into it. And also uh, another indication of uh, multi existence of multi-decade oscillation is the CBO. There will be paper later by uh, uh, other people, but uh, you can see that there's general trend here, uh, very similar to this feature, this is the, what we call Pacific Decade of Oscillation. Uh, the reason I emphasize is that the uh, IPCC says that this, the disagreement at the present time of uh, uh, their prediction with the present temperature is that it's a temporary one, a temporal one. Uh, this is the latest uh, JPL data to show that all Central Pacific region, sea, sea water temperatures, it's cooling. So it's more like uh, uh, <coughs> the PDO, Pacific Decade Oscillation, is now taking over. So it's not uh, just uh, regu irregular changes. So uh, this is IPCC, and the reason to their prediction is not, uh, could not predict this observation point is simply that they extend this one uh, like this and uh, predict it, but actually what happening in the main portion of uh, temperature changes come from recovery from little ice age plus uh, multi-decadal oscillation. I think I can stop now.